which are above. Welcome to the Open Forum, a telephone talk program designed to give people an opportunity to ask questions and discuss issues related to the Bible. Our host is Harold Camping of Family Stations Incorporated. This Open Forum has been pre-recorded. We will not be taking live calls. However, we encourage you to stay tuned and consider the inquiries that others have made. We trust this will provide insight into the Bible, the infallible Word of God, which is able to impart firm direction and offer testimony of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Remember, this broadcast has been pre-recorded. Now we present Open Forum with our host and Bible teacher, Harold Camping. Ning, how are you tonight? Again, may I have the privilege and the pleasure of coming into your home to visit with you for a little while? What shall we talk about together this evening on this anonymous telephone program? What subject is of concern to you? As you know, this is a program designed to offer you the opportunity to call in and share. To share your question, to offer your comment on any subject whatsoever. In my role as host of this program, I will endeavor to relate your call to this marvelous book that God has given us. This book is the Bible. The Bible, which is the source book of truth. But this is your program. We want to hear from you. So shall we take our first call tonight, please? Good evening. Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, good evening. I have a, a question. Uh, I'd basically like to know, uh, can or will uh, God the Holy Spirit or God the Father uh, woo a person, that is, draw a person uh, in any way, shape, or form uh, to repentance uh, to any degree? without having the full intention of saving that individual? We, of course, cannot investigate or know what God does. We do know this, that God gives us certain principles that he operates by or that we are to operate or, or to realize. One is that no man can come to me except the Father draw him. Now, how God works in the hearts of people to draw them just how he interrelates with the saved people, how he interrelates with the unsaved people, those are mysteries that we don't have to resolve and can't resolve. All we know is, is that I'm a sinner. I'm in trouble with God. And all I know is, is that God promises me that if I seek him with all my heart, I shall surely find him. God promises that he will not despise a broken and a contrite heart. Therefore, if I come very humbly to God and cry out for mercy, now there's another principle. He's, it doesn't mean he's going to uh, act the first moment that we want him to act. We beseech the Lord, we beseech the Lord, we beg of the Lord again and again. But we have these other promises. And how God draws us or how he deals with the unsaved, we leave that completely in God's hand. That's something that God doesn't disclose to us. Okay, uh, one question along the same lines. Uh, if a person believes he feels he's being drawn to God and sees his life, uh, a certain part of it, uh, you know, cleaning, beginning to, to shape up or clean up, uh, and he doesn't know how long it's going to take to, you know, to cry out for, uh, to, you know, accomplish uh, this salvation by, I know that God accomplishes it ultimately, but let's say he, he, he just believes that he is being convicted. Can the person just rest on that, on that knowing that, you know, if God wasn't drawing him. Well, how do I know w whether I'm really being convicted? How can I know whether God is really drawing me? Though that's not, the point is, is that I want to persistently beg of God for salvation. And because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, I'm going to persistently uh, meditate upon the word and, and study the word and listen to the word and uh, finally, when I discover that I have a real delight for the Word of God, not just certain verses that, that uh, uh, seem to indicate something that I like, but, but just a general appreciation, I, I delight in the Word of God. When I just find that increasingly I am being obedient to the Word of God, then I'm start going to start getting assurances that, I'm, that I have become a child of God. But the mechanism of it, how we get there, and, 
and uh, I've got, come so far, now can I, uh, can I uh, be convinced that God is doing it and he's going to keep go doing it? That's dangerous ground because uh, uh, you may feel today, I may feel very emotionally up. I may, it's a beautiful sunny day. I had a good night's rest and everything looks very rosy. And so I'm going to think, my, everything is going well between me and God. Tomorrow, it's a gray day. I didn't sleep well. I woke up with a miserable headache. Uh, and now, what is it? Uh, suddenly, I'm going to feel, oh, I guess things are not going well between me and God. We can't trust our emotions. We, because, uh, because uh, they're not just, they're just not trustworthy. What we have to trust is the Word of God. And, and we, we go day by day, just day by day. Uh, and and if, there's, if we suspect that we're not a child of God, we keep pleading, Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Camping. Thank you for calling. Good night. Good evening. Welcome to Open Forum. Sir? Yes. Yeah, um, I would, uh, I, I want to know, is um, uh, mental illness and being under the power of demons the same thing? Is mental illness and demon possession the same thing? No, not at all. Not at all. Mental illness can be a product of, of a chemical imbalance. It can be a product of, a, of uh, a, a, an affliction that we have in our mind. Uh, it can uh, be a product of a whole lot of different things. Uh, the fact that uh, we read about demon possession in the Bible and and here's a boy that throws himself in the fire and so on. Uh, and here's someone else who's got strength so that they can't bind him with change. And he's running around naked. Uh, these were descriptions that God gave us where there actually were people with demon possession. But on the other hand, there were those who were possessed by demons and showed no outside effect of it at all. And so uh, w we can't. We can't re relate the two at all. They, it just doesn't follow. Can um, a Christian have mental illness? Can a Christian have mental illness? Certainly a Christian can have mental, Ill mental illness. Uh, uh, mental illness can be an affliction just like physical illness. Okay. Thank you for calling and sharing. Now, it is true that a lot of mental illness is escape. When people, and this is a very subconscious, and, and frequently someone is, uh, cannot face life. Uh, life is very difficult. The home situation is difficult, or the work situation is difficult, or there are deep fears in this individual's life. And uh, there are various escape mechanisms that are possible. There are those who escape to alcohol. There are those who escape by by uh, drugs of one kind or another. And there are those who escape into the world of fantasy, where they are safe. They don't have to face the real world, and that's a real temptation to do. Uh, uh, now, a true believer will not take any of these escape routes. Uh, he will realize that he can go to God. and and the peace of God that passeth understanding will come into his life as he pours out his soul to the Lord. But on the other hand, there is mental illness that is uh, physical in character. That is, it has to do with defects in our minds, or it has to do with uh, the body chemistry. Uh, and then, and then uh, that kind of illness can afflict us whether we're a believer or not a believer. And shall we take our next call, please? Good evening. Welcome to Open Forum. Well, hello, Mr. Campy. I'm yes. calling from El Cajon. Well, yes, I'm glad to hear you. Uh, I, I presume you're going to be at Mission Spring. We are, and uh, that's why I'm calling this evening. I have a couple of things to, uh, to say, and one is, on behalf of all KCR listeners, we wish you showers of blessings on your birthday. Well, thank you very much. You know, the last time someone called like this was just one year ago today, <laughs> and I remember that this caller, isn't this curious? Just, just absolutely curious. 
But the, the caller who called a year ago was from El Cajon. Can That's you imagine right. that? That's right. And the second is Family Radio's Mission Springs Conference will yeah. be starting this coming Sunday, July yeah. 22nd to Saturday, July 22nd. Yes, and I hope there will be many, many people who will uh, tr try to come. If you can't, if you, there, you might call it up if you, to see if there's still any reservations possible. If there are none, come for the day uh, because you can still enjoy it very much. Yes, and I wanted to say a number of families are coming from this area and we're looking forward to being there. Well, wonderful. And so, if you wanted to say more about Mission Springs, and I'll hang up and listen on the air. All right, fine. It is true that once a year on the East Coast, we have a Bible conference for one week. Uh, and, well, actually, now we're, we have a second one. We have one in, uh, uh, in the summertime. And that was at uh, Sandy Cove this year, uh, about 50 miles north of Baltimore. Uh, but we also had one this year in March in Florida. That was a, a new addition. And the Lord willing, we plan another one there in March. On the West Coast, we always, near the end of July, take, the, take a week and are having a conference at Mission Springs. Now, the West Coast is a conference where we have many, many children. We'll probably have more than 150 children. And so we have a full program for children as well as for adults. And if you really would like to spend a day or two having a vacation with purpose, where you're away from it all, you meet a lot of wonderful people who love the Lord as you do, uh, you can sit under the hearing of the Word, uh, and at the same time you are on vacation, th this is it. You can have the best of both worlds. And I hope that I'll see many of you there. Shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Brother Kemp. Hello? Yes. Uh, I, I have not trouble with this marriage situation. I've been married before, and now I'm uh, separated from my wife. And I don't want to lose my salvation by... Re divorced and remarried again, and Bible teaches against this, ma uh, you know, marriage situation. I don't know what 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 what, what can I do? Should I should I try to re get back with my wife, or if she if I can't get a divorce and remarry again, will I lose my salvation in this process? Well, the question is, uh, first of all, you've asked two or three questions. First of all. Once we are truly saved, truly born again, is there any possibility, any way whatsoever by our action or anybody else's action that we could ever lose that salvation? And the answer is absolutely no. We can never lose that salvation. We've been given eternal life. And God is committed to complete that salvation that on the last day we'll receive our resurrected body, and we cannot lose it. Now, one of the evidences of salvation, however, is that there is an earnest, ongoing desire to do the will of God. Many, many people think they are saved, but are not saved. They think they're saved because they have prayed the sinner's prayer or they've invited Christ into their heart or they've, uh, they've uh, prayed, I accept you as my Savior or whatever. Whatever words that they were told to utter that they did and they were told, now you are saved. And now they're very afraid that they might take an action that would make them lose that salvation. Well, the fact is they never were saved. They never were saved. And... And uh, what they're really trying to do is to maintain a right relationship with God by living an exemplary life, uh, frightened that if they get out of line too far, they might endanger that salvation. Like I say, they were never saved. On the other hand, if you've truly become saved, God has really given you your new, your new resurrected soul, which is always true of someone who is saved. Then every time you face a question, of conduct or of doctrine, you're going to ask, I wonder where, where truth is. I want to follow truth. 
now if the bible says